Hi, it's Nicole and today I want to talk about the books that I've been reading uh, recently. I already made a video about this that was like 20 minutes long and I was like, mm, that's, that's, that's a bit much. So I'm going to try to be a little bit more concise and hopefully that doesn't mean chopping out too many things that would have been interesting to you. The book that I've just finished reading is called Women in the Picture by Catherine McCormack and I thought it was fantastic. Not just because she does a great job of being inclusive and looking at different perspectives, but also because she stays in her lane. And so while the book is very Western focused, I respect that she didn't decide to just like make huge claims about uh, Eastern culture, for example, and how women are portrayed in that way, even though I'm sure there will be lots and lots of links. There's also that, um, cultural difference that I think would be better assessed from someone from that culture rather than someone outside of it looking in even with years of study. So again while she does talk a, a little bit about for example how black women are portrayed um, it's still from a western perspective and those black women are in western society and so there is that basis of understanding so even though she's not black i feel like what she had to say felt valid and didn't overstep where she can kind of see if you know what i mean so um yeah i thought that the way that this was handled was done excellently um and i think that she does address lots of different groups and i think she does a good job of being quite inclusive and looking at all of the different ways that women are portrayed uh, generally. Our societal narratives about how we want them to be, where we want them to be, and so on, um, as well as how that does or doesn't align based on different groups within women that you might find yourself in. Something that I personally enjoyed as well is the fact that she mentioned the Manchester Art Museum which is sort of near to me so I went and checked out something that she mentioned in the book which is an exhibition that they had in 2018 that took one of the paintings out of one of the rooms uh, to encourage discussion so I looked at that display or what was left of it and a few other things uh, in the art gallery as well and talked about it in a creative field trip day post uh, on my patreon and I had a little sort of uh, preview video thing on Instagram, which I'll play for you now. So that was really fun and it's definitely something that I want to do more of, um, both the creative field trips, which I honestly, I just love doing that kind of thing so much. Um, as well as kind of, I guess, pairing it with a book that ties into that a little bit, um, or or even one that seems not to, but just seeing what happens, you know, seeing if there's a conversation between the things that I'm viewing and what I'm reading, because usually there is. And even that exercise in itself is something that I did do in the art gallery, where um, we attended this thing called Art Bites, and the gallery attendant uh, takes a small group around the gallery to look at two separate pieces of art, and you discuss each one in isolation, and then you discuss um, how those two pieces may or may not speak to each other, how they complement or contrast each other, which was a really interesting exercise for me and kind of makes me really excited to go out again and uh, check out more galleries and museums and things like that. At the end of 2023, I also read a book called Art and Fair, which is sort of a classic in the art world, um, at least from my understanding. Uh, I remember hearing about this book years ago when I first went off to uni to study illustration and it, uh, it kind of fits exactly what you'd think uh, for this kind of a book. Um, and I find with a lot of classics, not just this kind of classic, but classics in general, there tends to be this feeling of, I don't want to say disappointment, but a feeling of like, oh, I thought it would surprise me a little bit more. Uh, just because the we are more familiar with the works that are derivative of it. And so when you go back to the source, it kind of feels a little underwhelming sometimes. At least that's how I felt. And while I think there was a lot of value in this still, it does feel a little dated. And I think if I were going to recommend a book to someone to help them with a kick of inspiration and motivation, and also just feeling comforted <laughs> by a 
a book of this kind, I would probably recommend Austin Kleon's series of books that addresses that kind of thing instead. I think it's a bit more engaging and a little snappier and probably just more interesting for a contemporary audience. And currently I'm listening to The Brutish Museums, which funnily enough I only read the title of and thought was addressing the British Museum, and although the British Museum is also part of the Brutish Museums, uh, it's not the one, the main one that's um, being spoken about here. The author works at the Pitt Rivers Museum in Oxford, which I have visited, which is a different museum, but again, I mean, the Brutish Museums all kind of it's interchangeable. Um, I think a lot of the things that you can say about the, the Pitt Rivers Museum, you can say about the various other museums that have uh, stolen goods in them, right? I feel a lot of anxiety reading this kind of book in terms of not um, remembering all of the dates and all of the uh, major players and all of the consequences of actions and all of that kind of thing um, exactly and not having that like clearly in my mind and I feel like um, part of me is just trying to relax into it and be like, okay, just get the general idea. And the more that you read on the topic, the more things will be um, anchored in your mind and filled in. And I just kind of have to trust that process, but that's quite hard as I'm reading and wanting desperately to hold on to every little thing that he's saying, because it's really interesting. But that's definitely sparked a lot of interest in uh, the topic of the Benin bronzes and museums more generally and of course I've added more books to my TBR as well as a documentary to my to watch list too. And as I mentioned in my last video I would like to read three books in French this year and I started with uh, Feminisme Decolonial by Françoise Vergès and that has been going fine although I think a lot of the time when I read in French um, particularly books that are a little bit more complex, it can tend to feel like there are invisible sentences between each sentence that I'm secretly missing and it, anyone who's like native French speaker or just better at French than me is getting all of those little secret things that I'm not even though I feel like I'm understanding the content and so I've um, you know, checking in uh, with myself every so often and being like, okay, she's generally talking here about um, about how white feminism, marketplace feminism, what she calls civilizational feminism, is working a lot in tandem with white nationalism, um, white supremacy, uh, capitalism, etc, etc, and is not the revolutionary decolonial feminism that we need. It is instead something that is Islamophobic and that is squashing diversity and that is trying to force um, racialized women to fit something that would be unacceptable for uh, middle class white women for example. I feel like that's kind of what she's getting at and I think sometimes it feels like she'll mention a little thing here or there where clearly she has an opinion that's not fully um, discussed because I guess there's the assumption that oh we know what she's talking about and maybe that's because um, if I were French I would but I don't so <laughs> I kind of sometimes feel like oh a little elaboration there would be nice um, but I don't know maybe that's just because I lack the French skills to understand that what she's on about I don't know yet but yeah, I'm about 60% of the way into that and enjoying it, I guess, um, as, a, as an exercise of reading French. I think I'm kind of ready to move on to something else in that language, um, but I'm gonna just keep trucking. Uh, I think with this kind of topic, sometimes it feels like there's just more repetition of the same sorts of things, just more examples of the same. I get the gist, you know what I mean? Like there's nothing deeper there that's being said really it feels to me, although I am still highlighting some things that are interesting. But that's all for now. I'm gonna just wrap up no rambling as best I can because I've already filmed this like I said and it was like 20 minutes long and I, I just thought you guys don't have time for that. So um, I'm gonna leave this here and hopefully check in again more regularly with what I'm reading um, as I go. Yeah. So <laughs> I'll see you again next time. Bye.